like to take this opportunity to say a few words about our hot point garbage disposal and washer. You know, we've had ours in our home for several years now, and we think it's just wonderful. I'll bet that if you have one in your home for a couple of weeks, you'll wonder how you ever got along without it. It takes all the drudgery out of kitchen work. It's an absolute necessity to modern living. <laughs> Appliances presents America's favorite family comedy, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. So settle back in your easy chairs and enjoy another delightful half hour with all the Nelsons. Ozzie Nelson, of course, plays the part of the head of the Nelson household, Ozzie. And here is his lovely wife, Harriet Nelson, who keeps the family on an even keel. Hello, Harriet. The smiling young teenager we now see is David Nelson, older of the two Nelson boys and played by David Nelson. And here we have the youngest of the Nelsons, the little guy with the twinkle in his eye, Ricky Nelson, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Mr. Thornberry, better known as Ozzie's pal Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. David, the breakfast table is no place to be reading the paper. Well, I wasn't reading it, Pop. I'm just looking at the pictures. Well, what's the difference? Looking at pictures or reading, it's the same thing. I wish you'd tell that to my teacher. If you boys are finished, David, why don't you take your paper in the living room? Well, we were just waiting to help you clear off the table, Mom. Isn't that nice of us? Well, this sounds to me like the old familiar brother act of yours. The song and dance for the allowance advance. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the old act, Pop. Heck no, this is a new one. Getting out of the play for the PTA. Oh, what play is that? Oh, the PTA is putting on a pageant and they need some extra boys. Oh, looks like you two guys get hooked, huh? Yeah. Whenever they need mountains or houses, they just paint them on a big canvas curtain. Why can't they do the same with the boys? Yeah, that's a thought. Uh, what's the name of this play, Harriet? Oh, it's called Robin Hood and His Merry Band. Holy smoke, a musical? <laughs> Don't be silly, Ricky. I think you'll enjoy it. We'd enjoy it a lot more if we were sitting in the audience. Oh, come on. Now, it ought to be a lot of fun. Just think, you get to wear a costume and carry a bow and arrow. Hey, that's a neat idea. If anybody in the audience throws something at you, you can shoot back. <laughs> <laughs> well, then when Mrs. Pennyfeather stops by this afternoon, I'll tell her you volunteered, huh? Volunteered? If you ask me, we've been drafted. <laughs> hey, do we have any apples around here, Mom? Well, yes, dear. There's some in there on the coffee table, I think. Don't tell me you're still hungry. Oh, no, I don't want to eat it. I want to see if I can shoot it off David's head. <laughs> Any kind of a dirty trick roping the poor kids in on a PTA pageant? Oh, I bet they get a big kick out of it. Besides, I'm a member of the committee. How would it look if my own boys weren't in it? Oh, yeah. Say, maybe you'd like a part. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to rope me in on anything like that. I have more important things to do. Well, I can see your point, dear. You'd have to spend all your time rehearsing, and you wouldn't have any time to cut the lawn or... Help me with the household chores? Well, of course, on the other hand... <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to have anything to do with it. As long as you mention the lawn, though, I think I'll go outside and have a look at it. You're going to cut it? Well, don't you remember our agreement? I promised you I'd mow it as soon as it got to be four inches high. I was afraid maybe you'd forget. I think it's four inches high now. Oh, of course I wouldn't forget. After all, an agreement's an agreement. It has to be cut, it has to be cut. Good for you, that's the old spirit. What are you looking for? Uh, where's my ruler? Hi, Hans. Oh, hi, Thorny. What are you doing with the ruler? I'm just measuring the lawn. Oh, tired of green, huh? You gonna have slip covers made for us? <laughs> <laughs> no, Harry and I have a little agreement. When the grass gets to be four inches high, I cut it. Yeah? Well, it looks like that to me. Uh, no, it's uh, three and five-eighths. I just measured it. Oh. Say, you know, this isn't a bad idea. I think I'll work out a deal like this with my boy, Will. I'll cut the grass when it's four inches high. 
Well, where does Will fit into the picture? Well, he can cut it when it's three inches high. <laughs> that way, he'll never get to be four inches high. That's okay, Oz. I'm a patient man. <laughs> Tell me what you mean. I stopped by to make sure you're going to the PTA play this year. Oz, you won't want to miss it. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, no, no, it's going to be great. It's not like the other plays we've done. This is really going to be something. Uh, what makes you so sure? I'm in it. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I have one of the leading roles. However, I didn't stop by to brag, no, but as long no, as no, I'm no, here, I may as well. Minute. This is actually a fact. You're going to play one of the leading roles in the Robin Hood, the pageant, or play, or whatever it is? Yea, verily, tis written in the stars. Uh, just answer yes or no. I can't, Oz. I'm an actor. <laughs> oh, play that's going to be. However, I might have known you'd worm your way into it. You're such an insufferable ham. Who's a ham? Oh, why deny it? Look what happened at the Lodge Minstrel Show last year. You kept trying to ruin my solo. Every time I'd start to sing, you'd chime in with me. Well, neither one of us had any business singing. We were only ushers. <laughs> I thought it lent sort of a novel touch to the occasion. Novel is right. It's the first time I ever heard of the customers throwing out the ushers. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back to this Robin Hood deal, Thorny, as long as you're going to be in it, I want you to know I'll attend and I'll be pulling for you. I wish you a lot of luck. Spoken like a true friend, Oz. Yes, sir, I'll be there. When you forget your lines, I'll be pulling for you. When you stumble awkwardly around the stage, I'll be pulling for you. When the audience starts to titter a little and then they start to boo, and even when they hiss, I'll be pulling for you. When the play is all over, I'll go backstage and I'll go out in the alley and I'll pull you out of the trash can. Uh. <laughs> I'm glad you stopped by, Mrs. Pennyfeather, and I'm so happy to know that everything's working out so nicely. <laughs> Thank you a lot, Mrs. Nelson. I've gotten such wonderful cooperation from just everybody. Oh, Ozzy, you know Mrs. Pennyfeather. Oh, yes, I do, Mrs. Pennyfeather. I, that's quite a play you're putting on, I understand, over the PTA. Oh, yes, we're all excited about it. I imagine at this late hour, all the parts are taken. Well, I believe there are a couple of parts left. But don't worry, Mr. Nelson. Mrs. Nelson tells me you don't want anything to do with it. Oh, uh, well, I'm not a very good actor. <laughs> it's uh, Robin Hood, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, it takes place in England, I believe. Oddly, anything I'd be able to do. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Mr. Nelson, that's wonderful. That's nothing. It's uh, really nothing, mademoiselle. Uh, la plume est sur la table. <laughs> Nelson, he's marvelous. Oh, that's wonderful Spanish accent. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll be running along. Oh, uh, Mrs. Pennyfeather, on second thought, I hate to disappoint the ladies. I tell you, if at the last minute you should need an actor, uh, I can be coaxed into playing the part. <laughs> oh, that's very nice, Mr. Nelson. If we get into trouble, I'll call you. Yes, uh, just, just anything at all. Doesn't have to be a big part, just any small part at all. Mm -hmm. I'll try and find one for you, Mr. Oh, Nelson. Okay, but, uh, here you are. Here's my card. Mm -hmm. The name and the phone number's on there, just in case one of the leads should happen to get sick or maybe it's anything at all. Well, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, Harry, I was just browsing through some old things up in the attic, and I came across some of these plays that I was in in school. You know, I just don't get the sudden change in your attitude. When I told you about the play this morning, you weren't at all interested. Oh, well, I got to thinking it over, and I figured I should do my share for the PTA. I hope Mrs. Pennyfeather doesn't give me too big a part. You know, Thorny's going to be in this thing. He has one of the leading roles. Oh, is he really? Yeah. Didn't look so well today, either. I, I hope he doesn't get sick. Well, cheer up, dear. He might. <laughs> hey, here's one of the plays I took part in in school. Here, let me read you my part. Somewhere here in the middle. Well, here it is on page 16. It's a pretty dramatic bit, too. Don't shoot! <laughs> well, that's all. Uh, he shot. That was short. Started on page 16 and ended on page 16. Well, uh, yeah, it wasn't a long part as far as lines were concerned, but I was through the entire play as a result of it. You see, after the guy shot me, I rolled under the dining room table, and then I lay there during Act 2 and, and Act 3. It was a pretty interesting play. It was written by a guy named Ed Jones. He wrote most of the plays for us in school. Oh, Jonesy. Oh, listen. Here's one of Jonesy's. 
But hark, what light through yonder window breaks? Tis the moon, and Juliet is the sun. I think that was one of Jonesy's best. Why, Ozzy, that's Shakespeare. Oh, uh, yes, uh, I know, but we never had the heart to tell Jonesy. <laughs> oh, I get it. Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Pennyfeather. Mrs. Pennyfeather? Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. What did you say, Miss Pennyfeather? I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. Well, bury him out in the yard. I'm talking on the phone. <laughs> Evil men do lives after them. The good is often teared with their bones. Uh, just a moment, Mrs. Pennyfeather. Ozzy, Mrs. Pennyfeather is trying to tell me about your part. Now stop reading Jonesy's plays. Jonesy's? This is one of mine. <laughs> yes, dear. Uh, go on, Mrs. Pennyfeather. This afternoon? Oh, what part? Oh, well, yes, I'll tell him. Yes. Oh, I'm sure that'll be fine. He just wants to do what he can for the PTA. All right, goodbye. One of the leading parts. I can tell by the look on your face it's one of the leading parts and you hate to tell me. Well, you're right in a way. I do hate to tell you. Uh, 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 the part of, of Robin Hood, the, the lead? Well, no, it, it's not quite Robin. It's more like Dobbin, Yuri's horse. <laughs> a horse? Well, that's a fine thing to do. But, dear, you only wanted a small part. You said yourself you didn't want a lead. Well, you didn't really believe that, did you? Well, no, I didn't, but Mrs. Pennyfeather doesn't know you as well as I do. A horse? And probably just an ordinary horse, too. Not even any lines to say. <laughs> One consolation, you're the front half. Sure. Oh, I'll bet you'll be very good in it. Oh, yes, yes, I'll probably do such a good job that next year they'll do Tarzan and promote me to a monkey. Mr. <laughs> Roger, help me finish setting the table. Uh, hurry and stop leading me by the necktie. Well, I thought you were in a hurry for your lunch. Ah, oh, you don't have to fix any lunch for me. I think I'll just go out in the yard. There's three and five-eighths inches of nice grass out there, nice green grass. If anybody wants me, I'll be grazing. Ozzy and Harriet will be back in just a moment. Dishes, dishes, dishes. Three times a day, every day of your life. Sometimes does the sight of another stack of dirty dishes make you want to... Then, lady, you need a Hot Point automatic dishwasher. For here's the appliance that banishes dishwashing drudgery forever. Saves you at least an hour of work every day. More time and work than all other kitchen appliances combined. And let us show you how easy it makes your meanest, most tedious chore. Notice that each of Hot Point's racks pulls out separately and all the way out. Loadings of breeze. And look at all the room. Down here there's plenty of space for large cooking utensils, dinner plates, and silverware. Up here, space for 31 glasses and cups. No other home dishwasher holds as much as a Hot Point. And no other dishwasher can get your dishes so clean because only Hot Point washes every piece twice. Now, just turn the dial and your work is done. While you attend to other matters, your Hot Point double washes, double rinses, and hygienically dries every last item of tableware in pure electric heat. The result? A new standard of dishwashing cleanliness, unmatched by any other method. Your Hot Point automatic dishwasher will actually save you over an hour's tedious work every day. But what about the cost? This will really surprise you. Figured over the years, the cost of a Hot Point dishwasher, one of the popular under-counter models, is less than 10 cents a day more than doing dishes by hand. Now, mind you, that includes everything. Purchase price, installation, electricity, even detergent. Your classified phone book tells you where to find your nearest Hot Point dealer. Ask about his easy budget terms on all Hot Point quality appliances. And always look to Hot Point for the finest first. Oh, here you are. I wanted to 
wondered where you were hiding. Oh, well, I'm not hiding exactly. Well, I should be. What's the matter? Oh, Harriet, you know very well it's humiliating being made a horse's head. <laughs> Golly, I don't know why I let myself get involved in this thing in the first place. Well, why don't you just call Mrs. Pennefeather and tell her you don't want to play the part? What could I say? Well, tell her you just don't want to play it. It's the truth, isn't it? Well, yes, but I mean, that seems like such a, a cowardly thing to do. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't you call her on the phone and tell her I can't make it because I'm sick? I will not. I will not. No. See, the worst part of it is this Thorny has a leading role in the thing, you know. Well, you could have had a better part last week. Why didn't you volunteer then? Well, because I didn't know Thorny was going to be in it then. I didn't find out about it until yesterday. Hey, Mom, Pop, we've memorized our parts. You want to hear us? Sure, go ahead. Don't forget yours this time. No worry, I won't. Okay, you ready? Ready. One, two, three. Hooray for Robin Hood! How do we sound? <laughs> oh, that's very good. Isn't that good, dear? No, oh, uh, yes, yes. Your father's going to be in the play, too. No, Harriet, please. Oh, aren't you, Pa? What part are you going to play? Uh, well, I'm uh, going to play sort of a, a character role, David. Oh, are you going to be Robin Hood? Uh, no, but you're getting warm. Uh, perhaps I should explain the entire deal so you guys won't think what I'm doing is completely unimportant. Now, true, I'm not playing the part of Robin Hood. He's the big man. But for every big man, there's a little man. The man behind the man. Are you the man behind? No, I'm the man in front. <laughs> you mean you're in front of Robin Hood? Well, not exactly in front of him. I'm uh, 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 under him. Gee, that sounds like a horse. Oh, Ricky, don't be silly. Pop is going to play the part of a horse. <laughs> I was only kidding. Pop's a good actor, boy. What part are you going to play, Pop? I'm a tree stump. <laughs> tree stump? Gee, what kind of a part is that? Look, boys, your father's very generously offered to donate his time and efforts to make this PTA play a success. Now, it may sound silly to you, but the part that he's playing is that of a noble, valiant steed. Gee, what's that? Pop's a horse. <laughs> well, is there anything wrong with being a horse? Not for a horse. <laughs> well, I hope you won't be ashamed of your old father. I hope I won't embarrass you in, in front of your friends. No, we won't be ashamed of you, Pop. Of course not, Pop. You'll be all covered up, won't you? <laughs> Look, boys, I think you better go outside and rehearse your part some more. Okay, Mom. Come on, Ricky. Hooray for Robin Hood! Hooray for his horse, too! <laughs> What a humiliation. My own two sons ashamed of me. Harriet, this is the last straw. Straw, how do you like that? I'm even beginning to talk like a horse. <laughs> oh, dear, there is one possible way out. What's that? Well, I was talking to Mary Dunkel, and she said that Dunk's awfully disappointed with his part. Maybe he'll trade with you. That's all I want to know. I'll phone him right now. Hey, wait a minute. Look, there's always the possibility that his part may not be as good as yours. As good as mine? Harriet, what in the world could possibly be more humiliating than playing a horse's head? That's one chance in a hundred, but I'm not willing to take it. <laughs> Hello. Shake hands, Mr. Nelson. I just heard that you're in the PTA play, and so am I. Oh. We're fellow troopers. The show must go on. Stage door, Johnny. Pull the curtain. Don't update. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Nelson. We're actors. Don't you know any theater talk? Uh, theater talk? Uh, uh, two in the balcony, please. <laughs> no, Mr. Nelson. If you're going to be an actor, you've got to know the language of the theater. It's the language of grease paint and wigs, of costumes and backdrops, of color and laughter, of tears and cheers, of blazing marquees and dust-covered posters, success and failure, curtain up, curtain down, spotlights, floodlights, footlights. That's the language of the theater. Oh, and Lou, that, that's beautiful. <laughs> Being an actress is so exciting. <laughs> I'm playing the part of the innkeeper's daughter. Oh. What part do you have? Oh, uh, well, if you're the innkeeper's daughter, I'll be seeing you. Oh, are you one of the men who work at the tavern? 
Uh, no, but I sort of hang around the tavern a, a great deal. I spend most of my time out in back of the tavern, around by the, the stables, you might say. Well, if you're not one of the men, what else is there around the stables? You couldn't be a sack of oats or a bale of hay. No, uh, not exactly, <laughs> but uh, you're getting warm. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a little hint. Uh, who eats oats and hay? No one that I know. Let me think. Eats oats and hay. Uh, I, I might as well tell you, honey, Lou. I, <laughs> I play the part of a horse. <laughs> Uh, horse? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Robin Hood's horse. It's pretty awful, huh? Well, I think that's wonderful, Mr. Nelson. That's a very important part. You'll oh. be on stage just about all the time, galloping along, your horsey muscles rippling in the footlights, your long, graceful legs stretch out as the spurs bite into your ribs. Oh. Faster, faster, faster. Whack, whack, whack. There's a high fence. You've got to jump it, old horse. No, 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 wait, uh, Robin Hood. I'll go around and open the gate. <laughs> Mr. Nelson, racing along, your head held high, Robin Hood bouncing up and down on your broad back. Oh, say, uh, that's a thought. Robin Hood's going to be riding on my back, isn't he? Who's playing the part of Robin Hood, I wonder? Tubby McIntyre. <laughs> you mean they're going to have some big fat guy riding on my back? Oh, no, Mr. Nelson. They just call him that. He's not the least bit tubby and fat. No, oh, that's a real... You're sure? Oh, positive. He's 220 pounds of solid muscle. <laughs> yeah. uh, hi, Tony. Hi, Oz. I got some interesting news for you. That uh, play tomorrow night, there's going to be one really fine actor in it. Well, Oz, that's what I told you this morning. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> You've missed the point entirely. You're going to have a little competition. I've donated my talents, too. Well, <laughs> congratulations, Oz. I'm glad you're going to be in it. <laughs> we'll have oh. a lot of fun up there. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's what I think. You and I together. Oh, I can <laughs> see us up there now, horsing around. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you? Told me what? Don't we always horse around? Oh, 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 oh yeah. Boy, I've really got a great part, too. Of course, it isn't as good as the part you have. You have one of the leading roles. Well, uh, I was about the leading role. Uh, now that you're going to be in the play, I, I think I better tell you about it. Well, isn't it a leading role? Well, yes, yes, in a way. Uh, Robin Hood rides up on his horse, and I lead him into the stable. Uh, <laughs> what part do you have, Oz? Oh. Well, mine is one of those parts that will be talked about. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'll probably never hear the end of it. <laughs> I'm actually afraid the part is a little too big for me. Uh, I would say it's a part that suits a man of your talents a little better. Well, now, wait a minute, Oz. You mean you want to trade your part for the part of a lowly stable boy? The only thing he does is lead a horse into a stable. Well, yes, Thorny, I, I really would for the good of the play. Well, now, Oz, before you have a chance to change your mind, let's make a deal. You take my part and I take your part. Let's shake. It's a deal. <laughs> no backing out now. It's no. a definite deal. No backing out. You have my part and I have your part. Right. <laughs> all right, now, Oz, what am I going to be? Well, come on. Tell me. I'm all ears. <laughs> you will be. <laughs> Funny, old boy, this breaks my heart. You are now the front end of Robin Hood's horse. Oh, Oz, what a low-down thing to do. What a dirty trick to play on your old pal, Thorny. <laughs> oh, go on. You'd do the same thing to me if you got the chance. Oh. Uh, Besides, the part you gave me isn't so hot. A stable boy? Yeah? Who said you were? Well, that's what you were going to be, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to be. Up until about an hour ago when I traded parts with Dunkel. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You didn't tell me you traded parts with Dunkel. Well, of course not, Oz. You didn't ask me. Thorny, what part am I playing? Well, you were the head of the horse. Just back up a little. <laughs> Ozzie and Harriet will be back in just a moment. Do you still can garbage? Why not go modern? Get rid of food waste this quick and easy way with a hot point automatic disposal. Every last scrap goes down the drain. 
Ask your hot point dealer about the low cost of this modern sanitary method that eliminates the old-fashioned garbage can. This sign identifies his store. Headquarters for quality appliances, reasonably priced, and offered on easy budget terms. Always look to Hot Point for the finest first. Hi there. All right. I've been looking all over for you. Oh, Thorny and I took a little stroll downtown. What's up? Well, I got some good news for you. Mrs. Pennyfeather called, and you're not going to have to be the horse tomorrow night after all. Good news. Harry, that's a big disappointment. After all, Thorny and I were looking forward to being in this. He was going to be in the horse outfit with me. He was going to be the front part. Well, as I recall it, so were you. That would have been a rather interesting looking horse. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> well, you see, I had a very clever trick for getting Thorny to take my part. And he had a very clever trick for getting me to take his part. And prior to that, uh, Dunkel had had a very clever trick for getting Thorny to take the part that he originally had. And so it wound up by being quite a medley of very clever tricks and... And, and you ended up... Uh, I ended up the... Uh, the, the yes. <laughs> uh, how come we're not going to do the horse bit? Oh, well, it seems there's only one horse costume in town and the PTA hadn't reserved it. So when Mrs. Pennyfeather called up to rent it, somebody else had already taken it. Just this afternoon, too. Oh, what a shame. Huh? Yes, dear? We're not going to have hamburgers for dinner, are we? No, we're having pork chops. Why? Oh, boy, I sure am glad of that. I was worried. Well, since when have you been so concerned over what we have for dinner? You know what I found out in the garage? Oh, uh, Rick, uh, look, you're no, interrupting dear, what your, did you your find out in the that? garage? The skin of a horse. See, I was afraid we were going to have hamburger for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence. Uh, okay, Harriet, I'll admit it. Thorny and I went down there and rented the horse outfit. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. It certainly would have left the PTA in the lurch if they hadn't decided to eliminate the part of the horse anyway. Now, wait a minute. You mean to say they were going to cut out the horse bit even if they could have rented the costume? Uh-huh. Mrs. Pennefeather decided it cost too much money. Well, that's a fine thing. Thorny and his bright idea cost us $20. You sure it wasn't your idea? Well, we both got the idea, but after all, he's the horse's head. He's supposed to have the brains. Well, anyway, you were left out of the play. Yeah, we're out $20, too. Oh, uh, I'm going over and get Thorny. Would you ask Dave and Ricky to come outside in the back, please? Well, yes, dear, but what for? Well, I just thought they might like to witness the most unusual sight. A horse taking turns kicking himself. <laughs> week, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet will be brought to you by prophylactic toothbrushes, Listerine toothpaste, and Listerine, the most widely used antiseptic in the world. The part of Emmy Lou was played by Janet Waldo. Elmira Sessions played the part of Mrs. Pennyfeather. forget that a completely different episode of The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet is heard every Friday night on radio. Consult your newspaper for time and radio station.